Hello children I welcome you all to this English class In this session we are going to learn from grammar the topics are classes phrases finite and non finite verbs infinitives and gerunds First we will see classes Okay what is a class Yes a class is a group of words that contains both a subject and a predicate or a verb in a sentence isn't it so a class may form part of a sentence or it may be a complete sentence in itself okay yes so there are two types of classes they are independent class and depend look at the examples kavin bought a car which was too expensive look at the second sentence sanjay is a talented player though he is out of form in these two sentences we have both independent class and dependent class now we'll see both independent and dependent classes detailedly okay what are independent classes independent classes also known as main classes why you know because they are complete sentences and not only that they can stand alone and gives a complete meaning or thought in a sentence look at the examples i need a book mary prefers coffee rosy is a good singer all these three examples are comes under an independent class next we will see what are dependent classes dependent classes also known as subordinate classes they contain a subject and a predicate in a sentence but they do not express or give a complete meaning or thought when it stands alone look at the examples when it is raining because you were late after you go to school so all these sentences or not giving a complete sense or meaning so it need a main class to give a complete meaning dependent classes are divided into three parts they are adjective class adverb class and noun class let's see one by one detailedly the first one is adjective classes look at the examples the book that i left on the bus belongs to mr baskar the umbrella which has a broken handle is mine so in these two sentences the highlighted words are adjective classes why you know because the highlighted word in the first sentence describes about the book In the second sentence the highlighted words are describing about the umbrella so it does the work of an adjective in a simple way we can say that an adjective class describes or gives more information about a noun and not only that it tells us which one what kind or how many and also it does the work of an adjective got it yes the next one is adverb classes look at the examples they rested when evening came she was happy because her father gave her a watch in these two sentences when evening came because her father gave her a watch or the highlighted words called as adverb classes 
because the highlighted words did the work of an adverb. So, an adverb class describes or gives more information about the verb and not only that, it tells us when, where, how, to what extent or under what condition something is happening. Got it? Yes. And the next one is noun classes. Look at the examples. I expect that I shall get a price. This is the best route that I know. In these two sentences, the highlighted words are noun classes. So, a noun class takes the place of a noun in the sentence. So, a noun class is also a group of words which contains a subject and a predicate of its own and it also does the work of a noun. Got it? Yes. Once again, I repeat, an independent class also known as main class and it contains subject and predicate of its own and it can stand alone and gives a complete meaning. But the dependent class cannot give complete meaning when it stands alone. So it need a main class to give a complete meaning. Though it had subject and predicate of its own. This dependent class also called as subordinate class. Let's identify the dependent and independent classes in the given sentences. Look at the examples. What the girl did was not very helpful. In this sentence, the highlighted words are in dependent class. John continued playing although he injured his knee. In this sentence, the highlighted words are independent class. The trophy goes to whoever wins the race. Here, the highlighted words are in dependent class. He finally finished his novel after months of research. In this sentence, the highlighted words are independent class. The town where I was born is on the east coast. Here, the highlighted words are dependent class. When you finish your homework, please take the dog for a walk. Here, the highlighted words are independent class. Since no one else volunteered, the job is yours. In this sentence, the highlighted words are dependent class. That cat that you found belongs to Smiths. Here, the highlighted words are dependent class. The event cannot start until the president arrives. Here, the highlighted words are independent class. When I read this book, I feel happy. Here, the highlighted words are dependent class. There are the people who we met on holiday. Here, the highlighted words are dependent class. Let's see praises. What is a praise? A praise is a group of words that forms a meaningful unit, but it is not a complete sentence. In other words, it does not have a subject or a verb. Look at the examples. In a corner, blown away in the wind. The pink umbrella is blown away in the wind. There are several kinds of praises in the English language. Some of the common nouns are described here. Let's see one by one here. The first one is noun praise. A noun praise is a group of words made up of a noun and its modifiers. Look at the examples. The white car, my English teacher, the book. The red house is for sale. 
I want a cute puppy for Christmas. Here, the highlighted words are noun phrase, so it acts as a noun. The next one is verb phrase. A verb phrase consists of two things. The first one is the main verb and the second one is the helping verb. So, a verb phrase is a group of words made up of a verb, helping verbs and modifiers. Look at the examples. Run quick to catch. Filled with horror. Dedicated to. You have woken up everyone in the house. The brown cow is jumping over the rusty fence. Here, the highlighted words are verb praise. As it is made up of main verb and the helping verb. And the next one is prepositional praises. A prepositional praise begins with a preposition and ends with an object of the preposition. The object of the preposition can be a noun, pronoun, gerund or class and it helps to explain the relationship between two things. Let's identify noun, verb and prepositional phrases in the given sentences. Look at the examples. The spotted puppy is up for adoption. Here, the highlighted words noun praise. She can smell the pizza. Here, the highlighted words verb praise. At the zoo, I saw a striped zebra. Here, the highlighted words noun praise. The cat in the middle is the cutest. Here, the highlighted words prepositional praises. The car wash was out of order. Here, the highlighted words noun praise. Our boss put out a memo regarding the new rule. Here, the highlighted words prepositional praise. I will have been studying Italian for three years. Here, the highlighted words verb praise. The car beside the red one is the one I want to buy. Here, the highlighted words prepositional praise. She was walking on the ice. Here, the highlighted words verb praise. Let's learn something from finite and non-finite verb. Okay, what is a finite verb? A finite verb is a verb that indicates tense and changes according to the subject and it has subject and shows tense. Look at the example. John cooks carrot. His friend presented a watch. Arun invited Suresh to his daughter's birthday. Ramesh is happy. Here, the highlighted words are verbs. They are indicating the tense. Look at the first and last example. The verbs cooks and is shows the present tense. And in the second and third sentences, the highlighted words are in the past tense. The next one is non-finite verbs. What is a non-finite verb? A non-finite verb is a verb form that does not show tense. In other words, you cannot tell if a sentence is in the past tense, present tense or future tense by looking at a non-finite verb. There are three types of non-finite verbs. They are gerunds, infinitive and participle. Look at the examples. Walking is a healthy habit. Here, the highlighted word walking is gerund. I like to walk early in the morning. Here, the highlighted word to walk is infinitive. These are my walking shoes. Here, 
the highlighted word working is participle let's see one by one detaily the first one gerunds what are gerunds gerunds are words that are formed with verbs but act as nouns to find gerunds in sentence we should look for a verb plus ing that is used as a noun it's very easy to find out gerund in a sentence let's see few important things here gerunds are formed with the letters ing look at the example acting caring writing and listening verb plus ing look at the second point gerunds can act as the subject of a sentence look at the example watching tv is my favorite past time here watching is a gerund so watching functioned as a subject look at the next one gerund can be used as the object of a verb look at the examples i like fishing they do not appreciate my singing here the main verb is like and gerund is fishing so fishing is the object of a verb like and my singing is a gerund and this acts as the object of a verb appreciate and the last one only gerund can be the object of a preposition look at the examples we are thinking about walking in the woods here walking is a gerund and it acts as the object of a preposition and the last one is infinitives what is an infinitive an infinitive is a verb that functions as a noun adjective or adverb in order to express an opinion purpose of an object or action or answer the questions who what or why an infinitive usually begins with the word to and is followed by the base form of a verb look at the examples to fish to walk to talk to run infinitives can act as the subject of a sentence look at the example to think is something that comes naturally here to think is an infinitive that functions as the subject of a sentence the next one is infinitives can function as the object of a verb look at the example everyone wanted to go here the highlighted word to go is an infinitive that acts as the object of a verb wanted infinitives can also act as subject complement adjective and adverb look at the examples the first one is ambition is to fly here to fly is an infinitive it acts as subject complement so to fly is describing or complementing something of a subject is ambition look at the second example he lacked the strength to resist here to resist is an infinitive is used as an adjective so it describes the noun strength infinitives function as adverbs when they are used to give more information about adjectives verbs or other adverbs in a sentence look at the example we must study to learn here to learn is infinitive has adverb and it describes more about 
the verb study this is very important thing we should do remember always infinitives begin with the word to but infinitives lose the to when they follow these verbs feel hear help let make see and watch these verbs are followed by a direct object then we should use an infinitive without the word to look at the examples she made me do my project here made is a verb that followed the direct object to me so do verb lose the word to look at the second example sandy let a child go out alone here let is a verb that followed the direct object her child so the verb go lose the word to let's see more examples here look at the first example mohana is eager to see her family here to see is an infinitive that acts as adverb to raise a child is the highest form of education here to raise acts as subject her only goal is to graduate here to graduate acts as subject complement we are ready to play now here to play acts as an adverb the road is the place is to drive here to drive the infinitive acts as adjective to cry in the public place is embarrassing here to cry acts as noun i needed a sound sleep to calm my mind here to calm acts as adverb gardening is my favorite hobby here gardening is a gerund and it acts as subject i enjoy shopping with friends here shopping is a gerund and it acts as direct object her joy in preparing for company was obvious here in preparing is acts as object preposition and the last one is writing is an exchange of ideas here writing is a gerund and it acts as subject okay children up to this the grammar part is over hope you understand please go through your textbook to get a clear view okay and if you have any doubt you can call me to clarify all your doubts thank you